Hey guys, welcome back, new and old survival. Today we're gonna to do something I've never tried before. I've read about it a couple of days ago and I said, we gotta try it, so I wanted to share it and see if we succeed or fail. I've got my bag. Today we're gonna to make syrup, but it ain't gonna be from sap like you would maple or birch or some of the other walnuts even can be made into a syrup. Today we're gonna to use bark and I'll show you what tree and uh, the, I could get this recipe to go back as far as about 250 years, so it's not that old of a recipe in comparison to man living on the earth. But uh, we'll see how it turns out. I'll let you know if I like it. I'll make a little bit. If I do enjoy it, then we can always make more. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, what I have behind me is a shag bark hickory tree. Now I'm gonna try to zoom in. Sorry about the camera popping noise. I'll show you what that looks like. It's a shag bark hickory. And you can see that the bark self exfoliates. I was just kind of hanging off of that tree. And what we're gonna do is take some of the aim, not climbing up that high, but uh, we're going to pick some off the ground and uh, we're going to try to take some of the loose parts off of the tree because we certainly don't want to kill it although it looks looks like it's on its way out I just got a message and uh, then after I pick about a half a pound or so then I'll take you in the kitchen show you how to prepare it All right, the first thing I want to do uh, with this, I pulled this large piece off. Yeah, I don't know if it's all fitting in the screen or not. But just to show you, it's, it don't take long to harvest this stuff. And this was a laying over, the tree had already released it. But it's got this lichen. I'll try to pull it into the camera so you can see it. See that lichen? And what we're going to do is try to just lightly wash this get that lichen off if there's any bugs that's in here we want to uh, kind of scrape that just to make sure it's basically clean before we start using it and I'm not going to use this large piece because if I like it this is what I'll use so I'll set this aside and I'll try to just use what we collected in the bag and that took me all of about 30 seconds to collect I have a feeling I'm going to have to uh, clean the kitchen before Angel gets in here. So she's going to wonder what in the world I'm doing with this bark. So I'm hoping to surprise her when she comes home and let her be the official taste tester. I may be biased. Now she knows I'm going to do this, but of course she hasn't tasted it. But like I said, I haven't done it yet. Alright, let's get you over here before we can wash this stuff. All right, we don't want to get this stuff soaking wet. 
but uh, I don't see much on here. I'm just like lightly going to scrub it. I got a little potato scrubber. Now we'll take the, the dish towel. My wife likes Disney. And uh, after she sees this, I may be asking if any of my viewers has a place I can stay for using her dish towel to clean bark. Uh-oh. Ha-ha. Uh-oh. Just, you don't have to dry it out so much, but just some of that moisture's got to be removed. Then I'll have to clean the residue out of the sink. That's got some large under. There we go. Got it. We won't say anything. Uh, she'll just say, well, let's just go back to Florida and find us another Mickey Mouse dish towel. So. And being the man of the house like I am, I make all the rules and I'll say what goes. I'll say whatever you want to do, honey. We'll do it. Finished drying her off. Let's go over here, set this tripod down. Now, something I should probably think about right now is how big is my pot going to be. So we're going to break this stuff up so that it fits in the pot. There's a couple of companies that sell this stuff and it's $30 a quart. But if it ain't that hard to make and if I like it, then all I'm out of is a little bit of time and a little bit of sugar. All right. Put you back over here. I think we got a light in there. All right, they say about 10 to 15 minutes, and uh, you should start smelling it. So I'll bring you back once I smell and let you know how much time has passed. All right now I've got 5:30, so we'll catch you back. All right, the time is now 5:43, and I actually smell it. And uh, it's a sweet flavor. I've been checking on it a little bit. Looks like you might really lose one there. I've been using it. And toasting it helps it to impart that flavor that we're looking for. Or so I've read. We're learning together. So now, yeah, a little warm. It's still got a little moisture in it. It's not as crackly as it was before. Now we're putting it over here. Let's see if we can 
get you in here. Cut on some light. Let there be. And, uh, yeah, wow. I hope I got a large enough pot here. Do what we want to do. I think we do because I, I put more than eight ounces in there in the oven to dry out. Let's just pick the pieces that we already got broke up that'll fit. And we're going to add just enough water to cover our bark. And uh, bring it to a bowl and let it simmer. I think by breaking this up, you probably get more surface area. And that would give you more flavor quicker just like you do pine needle tea cut that stuff up instead of leaving the needles whole and it gives you more flavor it allows the uh, water to pull all the nutrients and taste I think right here we're mainly going for taste or I am all right I think that's about good enough that bark's hot. I said I wasn't going to use all this. Well, I won't. I'll save at least one piece. All right. So we've got our pot full of bark. Honey, what's for dinner? All right. Sorry about that, guys. My battery died, and I didn't know. But uh, basically, we just broke up our bark. I've had enough water to cover it, and we're going to bring this stuff to a boil. And after it starts boiling, we're going to let it simmer until I can look and what I can deem that the color is right. I'm going to tell you, the smell is impeccable, and that's a big word for me. But uh, highly reminiscent, wow, well, I'm like a thesaurus today, of maple syrup so let's let this thing go to work all right she's about ready to come to a bowl so I'm gonna watch it closely because from what I read boiling will cause more of the tannins to come out of that bark and impede the flavor and that's not what we want we want that smoky hickory sweetness. To give a shout out to one of my viewers, Dr. Me Awesome. I promise, buddy, I'm going to get you a squirrel or rabbit video soon to show you how I like to process them, cook them up. And I appreciate you watching. All right, guys, I believe the time has just about arrived. So I'm gonna take this bark. I didn't think about that. What am I gonna do with it? Be right back. Give me a trash can over here. All right, hemp. I'll take some of this bark. Yow! Ouch! You know what happens when you stick your hands in boiling hot stuff? It's hot. You get burnt. Now my son and my daughter will both tell you every time I go camping, I seem to get burned because I forget that age old rule that fire makes things hot. I usually end up burning my hands or something. Maybe, I think maybe the last time I went camping, everything's all right. So, all right, I think I got the big pieces out. Now let's strain and get the smaller pieces out. And this pot right here don't have a good uh, pouring spout, so we're just going to ladle it in there. And I'm going to make two cups. Okay. 
And of course I'd have that around backwards to the milliliter side. That is a pretty color. Reminds you of maple syrup color. enough. I'm going to add a little bit extra because the uh, standard for making syrup let's see what we got there. Oh there's two cups. The standard for making syrup is two cups of sugar for every one cup of liquid. So if I'm doing two cups that means I'm going to need four cups of sugar. Pour is out. I think that water's still hot. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's cool enough. Alright. Give her a quick rinse. Set this back on the stove. Turn her on. Bring my strainer out. Pour us back in here. Set it aside. Now, I've got my four cups of sugar plus a little bit more, but I added a little bit more liquid. And, uh, wow. I'll turn it up a little bit. One, once I do this, I'm going to pour all this sugar in here. <laughs> Got a sweet tooth? I can fix it. Where'd my metal spoon go? Here we go. Now, when I read this, some people were saying that they had some issues with their syrup crystallizing the next day or maybe a week after. And what you want to do is you want to stir this up until it dissolves, okay? And after it dissolves, you do not want to stir it anymore. Because uh, they say stirring actually promotes uh, crystallization. So if you got any on the sides, any crystals, right now is the time to get that off. Now, we're going to stir until she becomes clear. And... Then after that, we're going to put her in a hot jar. Which I should be getting. Guys, I apologize. My goodness, these batteries are killing me. Hold on, I'm going to move the camera. There we go. All right. And I know you didn't hear my last statement, but the uh, the taste is excellent. And I would compare it to maple syrup. I think if you served it and didn't tell people what it was, well, I think they wouldn't know the difference. But I've still got the heat on it, and I'm not going to boil it or anything. All of my sugar crystals look to be dissolved so now I think it's time to ladle this out to show you what we got uh, let's see that would be the moment where I'd burn myself again nah, I did good but I forgot my cannon funnel hold on You might think that uh, because this is an amber co colored pot that it's given the, the syrup a color. But we've got a clear glass jar, I'll let you decide for yourself. Alright, here we go. I 
ain't that pretty? And remember, this is heated up, so when it cools, it's going to be thicker. So, I might need another jar, huh? Yeah, buddy. So, instead of $30 a quart, I've got less than... I got less than two dollars probably in this, and uh, let's see. I'm gonna put a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and let this seal up. I'm using a one-piece lid, but I tried a one-piece lid the other day for the second go around, and it did just fine. Okay, put that there. Let her cool. Back to get another jar. I'm telling you. Just like our crab apple. If you do this, you're going to really like it. You may never buy maple syrup again. And I'd almost be willing to bet that this stuff will keep just about as long or just as long as maple syrup which has a indefinite shelf life because sugar is a preservative a little bit more all right Maybe a little bit more. I'll make sure this stuff seals. Yeah, she got warm. Ouch. Yeah, she got warm. Ouch. Hot. Hot, hot. Now we got about. Enough for a little jelly jar. I have to find another one. Anyway, guys, you can see. That looks good. And it tastes good. And I'll get a taste tester in here in a minute. And let somebody else taste it. 